Hey y'all, Coach Unify here, talking about the selection of the Lamb for Passover and the Third Testament of the Bible. That's right, in this year, we're going to choose the Third Testament of the Bible as the Lamb. Now, before we get into that, I want to take you back to the original selection process, which we find over in Exodus chapter 12, verses 2 through 4. This is when the father spoke to Moses and told him to teach the congregation of Israel that in the tenth day of the month that they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Now, back then, that lamb was a significant part of the Mosaic Covenant. In fact, the slaughtering of the lamb and putting the blood on the doorpost was the key element to that covenant but what I really want you to understand here is how the selection of the lamb wasn't between a good lamb or a bad lamb the selection primarily was for the size of the lamb and they were to be sure that the lamb had no blemish I mean it wasn't like they were choosing between lambs and piglets which would indicate the choice between something good and something evil like we do today as some of us choose to eat the Easter ham opposed to the Passover lamb that wasn't what they were going through back there during that time none of the father's people would have ever chosen an Easter ham over the Passover lamb that wasn't a reality as it is today no when they went out to look for the lamb they were looking at the size of the lamb and because they had to eat it all in one meal they wanted to make sure that the lamb they got wasn't too big for them because it would have been a shame to have to burn all of that extra meat up now that is what the scripture refers to as the first era the time of Moses and during the second era during the time of Christ we see that the selection process changed not only did the Messiah put himself up as the lamb but we see in Matthew chapter 24 that he actually rode in on the back of a donkey on the 10th day of the first month and of course it's on the 10th day of the first month that the selection process is made so it is easy to see how the Messiah was identified as this lamb but does the Messiah put himself up as the sacrificial lamb every year like he did 2,000 years ago? No, we see that he changed the selection process altogether when he instituted the bread and the wine during the Last Supper like we see over in Matthew chapter 26. So we're not choosing a human on the 10th day of the first month to slaughter like they did the Messiah. During the second era, the selection would have been of the bread and the wine that they would have consumed. Instead of down there at the rancher choosing the perfect lamb, they were down at the supermarket choosing the perfect loaf of bread and the perfect bottle of wine. Now, just as a side note, for those of you who this will be the first time you will be consuming bread and wine on Passover, let me tell you now, it is difficult to find unleavened bread in the supermarket and you may have to prepare your own. So on the 10th day of the first month, you might be finding you the perfect recipe for the bread that you'll make on Passover. But anyway, that was during the second era. And in today's time, we are actually entering the third era. So once again, the selection process has changed. And so now I would like to introduce some of you to the third testament of the Bible. Just like in the first era with Moses, we got Holy Scripture to guide us during that time. And right after the Messiah, we also got Holy Scripture to guide us through that time. Here in today's time, we have received Holy Scripture once again to guide us into the future. And just like the New Testament didn't take away from the Old Testament, the Third Testament doesn't take anything away from the other two. It is actually the third part of the trilogy that makes up what we know as the Bible. 
So in the first error when we chose the perfect lamb and in the second error when we chose the perfect loaf of bread, in the current error we are to choose the perfect word of God. You see right here in verse 102 of chapter 11 of the third testament of the Bible, it says, If I took the bread and wine, it was to make you understand that they were like the love that is the sustenance and life of the spirit. That's the key element to the third era or this time in which we are entering is that it is a spiritual time. You see right here in chapter 14 verse 31. Where it says the divine master awaits to give them the spiritual food and drink, the bread and the wine of true life. And in chapter 63, verse 154, it says, O humanity, you who have never known how to value my word and have never wished to sit at the table of the Lord because it has seemed too humble, my table nonetheless still awaits you with the bread and the wine of the spirit. So now what this is talking about is how in today's time there are plenty of people who are rejecting the word of God because it is not the form in which they expected the Messiah to return. They thought that he would come in a bunch of pomp and grandeur like they did back there during the Pharisees time and because it is humble in nature they are rejecting it saying it couldn't possibly be their God and they are rejecting him the exact same way they did before but as it turns out they're out rejecting our father is what they're doing see how over in chapter 2 and verse 5 it says do you remember that cloud in which my disciples saw me ascend the last time I manifested myself to them in truth it was written that I would come again in a cloud and this I have fulfilled talking about his return the Messiah has returned just not in the form that the modern day Pharisees the preachers and the teachers of the world expected him to come and so they are rejecting him but you see that it says that on Rosh Hashanah that his spirit came in a symbolic cloud to prepare us to receive his new lesson. Talking about this third testament of the Bible, which it says in 1884 he began to give us. It was in 1884 that we actually started to receive the third testament of the Bible. You see in verse 6 it says I did not arrive as a man but rather spiritually contained in a ray of light to dwell within human understanding. This is the means chosen by my will to speak to you in this era and I will take into account the faith that you deposit in this word. This is talking about those who actually believe the third testament of the Bible and does not reject it like the vast majorities are doing. Let's come over to the first chapter of the book and let's look down at a few verses here as he describes what this third testament of the Bible actually is. It starts off in verse 12 and I'll read that. It says, The seed of that supreme truth was planted in the heart of humanity for all time. Christ was the planter and he is still raising that seed. Later he shall come for the harvest and enjoy it for all of eternity. Of course this is talking about that harvest that we read about in the book of Revelation. But it goes on to say he shall not have to say again I hunger or I thirst for finally his children will love him the way he has loved them since the beginning. That's referring to the kingdom age that millennial reign when our father will rule the earth. But then you look at verse 13. It says, Who is it that speaks to you of Christ's disciples? It is he. It is I, the word, who speaks to you again, humanity. So this lesson that we received in 1884 was actually the Messiah's return once again as the word of God. We recognized him in the second era as the word made flesh. Well, it shouldn't be too surprising considering that John chapter 1 verse 1 says that God is the word and the word is God that the Messiah would return again in the word of God. Now, 
There are many who will reject this idea because to them, the only way they will recognize that the Messiah has returned is on the day of the Lord. That great and dreadful day that we read about over in Revelation in chapter 6. Well, for those who believe in the word, we will already recognize his presence. And it is through that recognition that we will have the protections we will need to actually survive the day of the Lord. Notice in chapter 6, it is only after the great earthquake and those stars fall to the earth and the mountains are moved out of their places will these people ever realize that the day of the Lord is a boredom. Well, it is because they had no faith in the word of God at all and didn't recognize his presence until they saw these tremulous events take place before them. Some people are just hard headed like that. But anyway. In this video, I just wanted to make you guys aware of the Third Testament of the Bible. You can find links to it in the description of this video. There you will find a PDF that you can download from a website called Jesus-Coms.com. And if you want it, you can go to a website called Get thirdtestament.com and actually purchase a hardcover copy of the book. There are soft cover copies that you can find online that look like this if you wanted to go that route. I prefer the hardcover copy because this is a very serious book and we know how easily it is to damage the soft cover copies, but they are cheaper. In the description, you'll also find links to the audio book of the Third Testament of the Bible that you can listen to on YouTube. Lots of different ways we can choose this third testament as the bread that we will consume during Passover. So go out, find you a copy. Choose the third testament for your lamb this year. Choose the method in which you want to consume it, whether it be audio book or hardcover book or softcover book or a PDF. And may our Father bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.